All right, and then we get to the play that generated the most discussion, okay? Zay Flyers was hot this game, right? He should have had a touchdown uh, that last possession. Once again, I think some of that frustration boiled over to here. And uh, Flowers and Lamar was also my most uh, used stack in this championship round. So it ended up uh, hurting your boy when it comes to underdog fantasy. And don't forget, you could sign up for underdog fantasy. Sign up now. Promo code Carter. You know you want to, baby. They're already doing drafts for next season where you can win 200K off a $10 draft. Are you kidding me? Underdog fantasy. Uh, Lamar and Zay Flowers was like my number one stack during the season as well. Love these two. And first thing is this should have been a tripping penalty uh, right here, okay, um, on Legereus Need, okay? Maybe that's why Zay Flowers was not happy. You cannot, in this spot, stick your leg out like this and intentionally trip someone, okay? Um, at least that's how I see it. Uh, but even with that said, I could see why Zay Flowers was, was mad about that. You can't taunt somebody like this. You've got to hold your your, your temper right here. And uh, there you go. They're trying to uh, keep it together, and they're not able to do so. And then we get to the biggest play of this game, okay? Um, you get the shallow drag right here to Zay Flowers. Was Lamar a little late on this? Maybe. But still, he's open. He delivers a strike. He does have to slow down just a tad, but it's still a really good throw. And obviously in the spot, you can't just stick the football out at the goal line. I know it's natural instinct to do that. And you'll see it right here. This is just an just a great play, right? Of course, if you're Zay Flowers, you want to keep that ball tight. But I also understood what he was trying to do as well. Once again, this goes along with the Ravens' undisciplined nature of this entire game. You've got to make a stop, okay? And the one thing you don't want to do is helmet to helmet Patrick Mahomes when the ball has clearly been released, okay? As dirty as this sounds... There's a little bit more equity in this decision if you do this early in the game. But later in the game, when you're already down by 10, you know, these late hits, I mean, the damage Mahomes has done to you has already been done. So if your intent right here was to get a kill shot, you'd want to do that earlier uh, in the game. So that's just really stupid stuff by Clowney. And it's clear as day. Okay, watch this. Helmet to helmet. Boom. I mean, you just, you just can't do that. Just can't. All right, so we move ahead to this third and 13, and the Ravens get yet another massive break right here. This saved a full minute, essentially, of, of game time right here when Patrick Mahomes missed this wide open receiver underneath. And this right here, if you make a decent throw, number one, the clock still moves, even if he just falls down right here and doesn't gain any extra yardage. And if it is a decent throw, he's able to catch this, and he's probably picking this up or at least making it a manageable, uh, you know, fourth down decision right here, or you're kicking a field goal. And, God, that was just so, so, so huge uh, of a miss right there from Pat. Then we get yet another missed call right here. This should have been tripping. This is a perfect, perfect swim move right here by... Um, Chris Jones, one of the best players of all time now, really, when it comes to the postseason. He gets tripped. You don't really get a good angle right here. I know there is one. You might be looking at it now. Um, but that should have been tripping a safety. Uh, but you're able to get out of it and pick up a positive gain. So instead of it being... Uh, 19-7 to with the Chiefs getting the football back, you're able to pick up a nice gain right here for a first down. We then get to this third and one. And once again, this was a better job of them hurrying up and getting to the line of scrimmage. Once again, they snap it with 18 seconds. It's a little cut off the snap. Um, first thing here is this ball should have been just thrown for an easy conversion right here. Okay, I don't know why Lamar got off of this with this linebacker's leverage being this far to the inside and this corner being out here. This honestly should have been just an easy pitch and catch right here uh, to Rashad Bateman. Throw it just right there. Instead, he decides to work back here to Isaiah Likely. And the spacing here on this side from, you know, Todd Monken's, uh play design just is... 
not the absolute best. You see how close these two receivers are, likely and Aguilar. This makes it very easy for these two players to be, uh, to be defended. So now Lamar has got to extend the play. He does a good job sitting in this pocket, but at the same time, the Chiefs are doing a really good job of you know, maintaining their pass rush lane integrity. And Lamar has to do something rolling out here to the right side. Now, I'm not going to show you the all-22 angle because nothing actually did get open down the field. But one thing I, uh, the, you know, criticism of Lamar just in the second half, you're in a lot of trouble when you are losing by this much, okay? You just cannot take this sack right here, all right? Um, you know, it's one thing right here to be looking for someone down the field, but another thing, if you're not going to throw this I, and, and then at the last second decide to run it, I need a little bit more umph right here, right? He goes down very easy, and I understand that guy is way bigger than him, but still. Now, this should be an automatic decision right here to go for it on fourth. Lamar is complaining about something, and he's coming over here to the sideline. Right here, you have to know that you're going for it on fourth down. You're down by 10, and it's a fourth and two. This is an automatic go for it signal. And when you're doing all of this and everybody's hands are on their hips, you see how much time this is burning right here? This should have been an automatic go for it on fourth. Instead, you're burning this much clock to get to the next play. The Ravens' overall lack of situational awareness in this game was so unfreaking believably bad. And part of it is because they just don't play a lot of games when they are down by a lot. Okay? And you'll see that this should have been a delay a game penalty. They're normally pretty lenient with this stuff. Okay, actually, no, they do get it off uh, just in time. So, excuse me. Um, still, getting this off just with like a half second on the clock is crazy. And then eventually, you know, they are able to pick up this fourth down. It's a good job by Odell sitting right there. Once again, you'll see how much clock is burning, right? I know we move along here, but I felt the Ravens could have been moving a lot quicker. And because they substituted players into the game, that forces them to obviously stop it and slow it down that much more, okay? Is this a hold right here to the inside on this linebacker? Ah, no, I don't think so. It was close. They were able to pick up this first down right here. But still, if you're the Chiefs, you're at least you're making them earn it, and you're just... It's just taking so much time when you are down by 10. I know the clock has stopped, but still two seconds. I, I, I guess that's okay if the clock has stopped. It's just hard to get in a hurry-up kind of rhythm. Um, we then get into this triple coverage interception, okay? The, just a really, really, really bad decision right here by Lamar. And we'll show you the All-22 as well. I understand that you know some fans wanted a pass interference call, but... It's just hard for me to be sympathetic anytime we throw the football into triple coverage like that. And you've gotten so many officiating calls to go your way this half. It's just really hard. Now, you'll see right here, the better option, of course, the dig from Odell Beckham Jr. The first thing here, and you know, I'm an LSU guy, so I love Odell. I, I, I don't feel he ran this route at a gazillion miles per hour. It looks like he was tired. Um, it wasn't the best route I've ever seen right here. Um, still, we get to Isaiah Likely, and, you know, he's holding his hand up. I guess if you're throwing this football earlier and you're full all out leading him vertically here, you could make this throw. But it's just, it's just not a good decision. Okay? I understand that some fans wanted the P.I. right there. I get it. But... You'll notice that Odell did eventually get open on the dig. Nevertheless, it's just a bad throw and a bad pick. And here's a screenshot of the P.I. Yeah, I understand. It's tough. I get it. I would be frustrated too. Lamar's not the only quarterback to throw his helmet to the ground, but still. We then get to here, and yeah, I mean, this was just a ridiculous play right here by Lamar. Uh, it's cut off here. I'm not going to show you the all-22. It was all... 
hitches and nothing was open. He did a good job eating this and just making something out of nothing right here. Uh, a good throw right here to split these two defenders. And that's just a really good catch right there by Hill to not only fall, but, you know, pick up this first down and live to fight another day. Okay. Now, they did bleed 20 seconds after this. I'm guessing that's okay after a frantic, you know, third down. But I do want to show you that Linderbaum is saying, we've got to just move quicker in this spot. So I'm going to show you the next play from the all-22 angle. Um, it's a play action deep shot, okay? So a deep drop back out of shotgun. You have to understand if you're this far back and you're in shotgun right here, you're obviously trying to work a deep shot of some kind. Okay, so Zay Flowers trips at the beginning of this play, all right? This deep shot to Bateman is not there. This isn't there. Likely right here for the check down, you could throw this if you want it. Also, you could step up into this pocket. The one thing we want you to do is start climbing, right? It looks like Ronnie Stanley gets beat really bad on this play. He kind of sort of does after a good start on this play. He decides to get aggressive here with Carl Loftus. Carl Loftus uh, counters and decides to go to the outside. This is a long time to hold a good pass rusher. Um, but Lamar should have already stepped up right here and then just hit this, okay? Or... If you want to get really sexy, and I think Lamar does see this late. He could have thrown this as a flyers. You can see he's pumping right here, but he feels Karloftis is right there. So this could have been thrown. Um, but Lamar doesn't really have the cannon uh, to fit this in. You know, Mahomes and, and Josh Allen, Herberts of the world, they're making that throw right there. It's a tough one. But this also goes back to Lamar not really running in this game. There is a wide open rush lane for him to run through when you get right here, okay? Bang, put your foot in the dirt, go as fast as you possibly could if you're Lamar through here, and maybe you're fighting your way, um, you know, through these two players, but Tranquil does a good job getting off this block and eventually making this play, and it's only a two-yard gain. So this is a better job by the Ravens. You know, you're hurrying up. Only eight seconds bleeds off the clock, okay, after you pick up, um, and I didn't show it to you, a nice little first down on another dump off to the running back. Ravens get lucky here. This should have been a hands-to-the-face penalty right here on Chris Jones. It's kind of tough to see, but you can see the hand is in the face of Jones. It doesn't stop him, and I mean, Chris Jones is a GOAT for a reason, okay? Um, and he's through there. Now, Lamar, this time he actually does use his legs, but you'll see on this all-22 angle that he actually makes a huge mistake. Good job by the referee getting out of his way. Uh, we saw what happened in that 49ers game. <laughs> but this is just, you know, prototypical, amazing Lamar Jackson. This is a great play, all things considered. But I'll show you, he, he did make two pretty big mistakes. Now, I'm not going to call them mistakes. It's a little too harsh. It would have been a special play, but if you're the MVP, you've got to step up and make one of these two throws. So I know I've been asking for Lamar to scramble a little bit more in this game, but if you have the opportunity to throw, you want to throw because the downside of a throw here is what? An incompletion or an interception. If it's an incompletion, the clock stops, okay? If you complete it, it's a huge gain. So the first thing here is, let's just say Lamar was able to sit in this pocket and go through, you know, his typical progressions right here. Two things could happen. He could hit this check down again for a nice gain. He could hit... um you know, Aguilar after the chip block right here. Uh, he could have actually still thrown this right here if he wanted to. So throw this or throw this. But, you know, when Chris Jones is breathing out of your neck, you got to go make something happen. Lamar does a good job breaking the contain right here of George Karloftis. Now, after this, okay, he's rolling out to the right side and bang, He's got a chance to throw this football to Zay Flowers on the run. Now, once again, we know Lamar's arm is not the best part of his game, okay? If he did have time, once again, it's tough for me. I'm not in the meeting room. I'm not Lamar Jackson. I'm not a coach, so it's easy, once again, for me to sit here and, and say this. But this would have been open if he would have been able to sit in this pocket, okay? Um, it would have taken a perfect throw, um, but obviously, there's... 
players he could throw this football to. Okay, you could throw it right here to Isaiah. Likely he catches it and he gets out of bounds to save some clock. But if you're rolling out to the right side, he knows Zay Flowers is on the right side. I mean, look at this. It does eventually open up on the scramble drill, and it's tough for me to see from this angle if he's even looking in this direction. This ball is also there to Odell if he wants to throw it. So he has this throw right here, which is a first down. He also has this one to Zay Flowers. It's a tough throw. Once again, his arm isn't his biggest asset when it comes to his arm strength. He is a great thrower. Um, If you're throwing this football towards the E, it's a touchdown. Or to the N, it's at least a pass interference, and you're getting the football at the goal line. Um, But instead, he cuts it back, and it's still not a bad play in this situation. But that was another touchdown to Zay Flowers that, that, that was missed in this game. All right, so it's third and five, and, well, I mean... This is just there. It's another miss by Lamar Jackson. He looks left. That's not there. Justin Reed is is right there. And he's looking directly at Isaiah Likely right here for the first down. You just got to fire this thing in here. I mean, there's just no other way around it. You've got to just put it right there, okay? Instead, he decides to extend the play, and, you know, he just throws it up. And this should have been pass interference or at least a holding call. You can't just tackle a guy, even if it is uncatchable or whatever. That was holding, and it should have continued the drive. And you do get the reverse angle right here. Chiefs do get away with one right there. You just can't. You can't do that. You know, those guys are um, the former former Super Bowl champions. And to be a champion, you got to go through a champion. So at the end of this video, I want your honest opinion in the comment section down below. Do you put this loss on Lamar Jackson? And are you concerned that Lamar may never actually win the big one, right? He's got two NFL MVPs, but zero Super Bowl appearances, right? Is this game in particular on Lamar Jackson? Because he did do some incredible things. And it's important to remember how this game actually played out, right? The start of this game, and this is why it's so important to watch part one. I put a lot of it on, well, just watch part one and you'll see. Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey... This was arguably their best game that they ever played together, especially when you factor in the circumstances, how big of a moment this was, and how this Ravens team is one of the more legendary. There was just so much pressure on him to keep the Ravens in this game early because their defense just could not get Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes off the field. So Lamar's defense, after obviously the start of this game, stepped up, and the Ravens' offense got very cold. And before this touchdown pass, there is something to add here. There was a very good run design out of something called 21 personnel, which means you have a fullback on the field. And they were able to pound the football for a nice gain before this touchdown. And here is a play right here for yourself. And you can see this is more smash mouth football. This is what the Ravens did throughout the course of this year. They were able to run the football at will. And honestly, I think they could have done a little bit more running, right? This is a tweet from Seth, and you could see that the Ravens had light boxes. They just rarely ran on it, and this Chiefs defense honestly just punked them in the trenches, um, in the secondary. Really, only Zay Flowers uh, was a receiver getting open, and like we showed you in part one, and today as well, there were plenty of other open opportunities for Zay Flowers to score open touchdowns in this game, and two in particular, um, Lamar missed both of them, right? And they weren't entirely his fault, which gets back to Lamar Jackson. Sure, the play calling could have been better. Sure, the defense could have been a little bit more stout early on, and situationally, they could have been a little bit better, but The bottom line is Lamar Jackson just did not play well. I thought one thing working against the Ravens is, well, they were in so many blowout games this year that they really struggled playing in tight, close games. They had some really rough moments uh, when the Browns came back and beat them, when uh, the Steelers beat them in a close game earlier this year. They just weren't situationally smart, right? Um, And you, you could just see it throughout this film study today. 
you know, you're losing by 10. You've got to push the pace. You've got to move a little bit faster. You have to understand how much trouble you actually are in when you're losing by double digits versus these Super Bowl champions. And look, I, I felt Lamar definitely could have played better. And I also think the Ravens could have done a better job checking into better plays. Like we said, this is one of the best teams that we have seen in NFL history. They just fell short to arguably the greatest quarterback and, and tight end duo in the history of the sport and uh, maybe the best offensive and defensive play caller duo we've ever seen in the sport with Spags and Andy Reid. So comment below. Let me know what you guys think. I, I'm still very bullish on Lamar's future and I love watching him play and I, I think this Ravens team has a chance to come back and be good again next year. It's just going to be hard because Joey B is going to be back healthy. The Browns still have a loaded roster. Um, and the Steelers are the Steelers. So we'll, we'll see how it turns out. It is power hour NFL. Boom. And tonight, oh, we're doing clam chatter. Let's go.